Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the NBA Front Office YouTube channel. Let's talk about cap space. Which teams have it? Where are some of the top free agents going to land? And uh, maybe a little bit of which teams do not have it as we're going over this list. But there's a lot of teams out there with spending power. Maybe not that many free agents, but some guys are really going to get paid. Joining me to discuss this is Keith Smith, the guy who has the best salary cap sheets ever. <laughs> so, Keith, what, let's go through it. Who's got the most spending power this offseason in the NBA? It's going to be burning a hole in their pocket, I know. What, what are we looking at here? Yeah, so what we're talking about here, guys, is these are my salary cap projections. So the, these are just what, based off what I'm hearing around the league, some of the reporting that we know is out there and options that have already been uh, picked up and declined. There, we, we've got a couple of those going on. Uh, this will continue to get refined over the coming weeks as we get there. Late July is when uh, most uh, player options are due and those kind of things as the league year this year turns over in early August. But And if you really want to look at these a little bit more in depth, you can head on over to spot track um, where all my uh, cap work is going to be located now and you can go to a team and pull up their 2021 22 cap sheet and you'll see everything laid out there for you same numbers right here because we checked them yesterday they all match and tick and tie so uh yeah team number one on the list most cap space projected in the league the new york oh, Knicks, boy. about 51.3 million in cap space this is not all that far off from where the Knicks were a year ago uh cap space wise they had a ton of it they used it very wisely in my opinion i would hope in all opinions they made it to the playoffs again uh but they basically kept their powder dry it was all short-term contracts a lot of one-year deals for guys out there that they, they carried 15 million cap space into the season use some of that to go get derrick rose uh then they, they made a signing late in the year of an overseas player luca valdoza um who they, they're hoping maybe might pop for them but yeah 51.3 million uh, all kinds of flexibility and i'm going to say this just now one time uh, i won't repeat it so much that it gets annoying for y'all but it doesn't have to just be used on free agents cap space right. can be used on trades to claim a guy off waivers all sorts of things there so so all kinds of flexibility for the knicks going forward and now if they get to this number they get a whole lot of roster spots to fill too because it's going to be Julius Randle, rj barron and only a couple other guys coming back they're rookie guys uh but yeah but all kinds of flexibility for new york moving forward and the knicks now that they had success made the playoffs this last season they seem like the, a team on the rise they're going to get more attention from free agents than they have in seasons past uh look a few seasons yeah. ago the knicks the the move would have been use all the cap space on russell westbrook bring him in <laughs> burn all of it and we'll get Ru russell westbrook everything will be great but the knicks they turned a corner this last season and, and suddenly started yeah, making these very smart moves very very non nixie moves um and it was great to see so i think that we they are set up for a very very interesting off season one that could see them be be pushed even further up in the Eastern Conference if they're able to make the right decisions here. Um, next team on the list, though. 100%. Yeah, I, go ahead. I, well, one thing I will say with the Knicks, too, is I think this new front office really respects the Knicks fans in that, hey, they're intelligent enough to understand a plan. It does not have to be we got to win right away. Like, we can really lay this out for them. And that's all I think Knicks fans wanted was give us a plan. You know, tell, tell us what it was. Now, clearly, uh, they were better than planned last year. And I think you're right under old iterations of that team. They would have said, hey, let's add DeMar DeRozan. Right. Let's do this. Let's do that. And it might have, you know, kind of gone sideways on them kind of quickly. I think this group's going to do do things slightly differently and say, hey, we had a great season last year, but that's not taking us off our course. We're, we're, we're charting a course here and we're going a direction. Next team on the list. This one may be a shocker to people because it's only about every six, seven, eight years that this team has cap space. But when they do, they tend to be very active and use it very wisely. The San Antonio Spurs. And this summer, they've got a lot of it. $48.9 is how much cap space I project them to have. Oh, no. uh, and that's not, unlike the Knicks, that's not meaning you're left with four players left on the roster. Uh, I was telling Trevor off air the Spurs have two players who make over $10 million next season on the books. That's uh, DeJounte Murray and Derek White at $15 million or so apiece. And then the next highest paid guy on the team, Jakob Pertl at uh, under $9 million. So all sorts of you know really good contracts for, for the Spurs. Um, I think they are a team that could really be a player in restricted free agency. Uh, give Trevor knows where I'm going with this yeah. one because he knows the guy I love for them. John Collins. 
bring them down. You know, go give give them a max offer sheet and force the Hawks to make a really difficult decision, knowing they're already pretty expensive and they got to pay Trey Young a year from now too. So yeah, that that's what I think you could see the Spurs do is really get heavily involved doing stuff because the guys who are coming off their books are guys that we don't really know how interested they'd even be in bringing them back. And if they are, they're certainly not bringing them back at the numbers they're at in the past uh, couple of seasons. So yeah, Spurs going to be dangerous this off season. Yeah, you know, that that's interesting. Cause that's another thing that these teams with cap space can do beyond just, you know, signing a, a guy who's an outright free agent. You can go and kind of mess with some other teams um, in order to, like by throwing the Sean Marks approach, yes, the Sean Marks approach, right. <laughs> and, uh, and do that and, and to see if, Hey, maybe we can get the player. And if not, at the very least, we're forcing one of our competitors to pay probably more than they would want to pay to keep this player around. So that's something that we might see as well. The Spurs traditionally not seen as a major landing spot for free agents, but part of that is because they usually don't have spending power. So it could be interesting to see yeah. some of the moves that they make here uh, and players that they do target. I would expect them to, to look for younger players. Like you mentioned, John Collins could be a great fit. But regardless, it's going to be interesting to see the, the Spurs finally kind of rebuild this thing. Yeah, and these guys, they're they're not always in on the flashy superstar free agent types, which this draft class is pretty short on. So you're you're looking more at the, you know, kind of val- more value signings, the smart signings, the kind of guys you you want to do. And yeah, and if they have to overpay a little, well, you have to overpay for restricted free agents anyway. Because if you give them a really good contract, their current team just matches. You know, it's it's not not that simple. So yeah, I'm very very interested. They they may be one of the more interesting teams to me just to see where they go with all this this flexibility you know moving forward with them next on the list oklahoma city thunder now this could go one of two ways they could choose to stay over the cap and keep they've got a couple really big trade exceptions that they could look to hang on to i don't think they're going to i think that they're going to go under the cap because those trade exceptions would need to be used right away uh, almost at the start of the season or a start of the off season rather and then then there are a couple of them are going to going to expire pretty quickly but they can get to about 37.5 million in cap space and that's what i project i, I think they'll get there this is another team that is uh not gonna have a million roster spots that my wife's checking in there on, <laughs> on her birthday with a sneeze god bless you um so it is uh you know it is um uh with the thunder i think you know you've got shade gilgis alexander's kind of one of your young building blocks uh your draft picks tail maladon alexi pokashevsky darius baisley from from uh the prior year you're in a pretty good place if you're you're the uh the thunder and then what i think becomes very interesting is you know how do they use this going forward? Are they still in asset collection mode where they're going to take on a couple more questionable contracts and add to that ever growing overflowing treasure chest of picks <laughs> that Sam Presti has, uh, you know, or are they going to start to use this to maybe uh, incrementally improve the team and start to move up? I think it's probably one more year of asset collection. And then we start the process of growing this thing forward. I am of the belief that they are trying to collect every single pick <laughs> so that at some point they consolidate it and one draft is just like the first 15 picks are all Oklahoma City Thunder. So no, that's not really going to happen. But uh, I'm going to give think- you, let me tell you something. They, yeah. This is nothing to do with anything, but I just want to share it because it's one of my proudest accomplishments as a video game GM. I, in Madden one year, acquired all of the first round picks. In a, in a draft. Now it was a mess in my, then I, I think I played out like one more season and it was awful. Um, but yeah, but just, just, just saying it, it can be done at least in Madden. You can acquire all the first round picks in a draft. Well, that means it can totally happen in real life then, right? hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I think that, I think the Thunder could, Thunder could very well um, just absorb more, more salary, right? Take on guys and get paid in picks for that and, and they'll just continue sure. to accumulate assets and then move from there uh, at some point they're going to try to rehabilitate the the value of Kemba walker they might flip him this offseason might be later on during the season or whatever they're going to try to chris paul him where they can rehab yep. his value and then send him somewhere else for more assets so that's what what i think they're going to do with this cap space i wouldn't expect them to make a big signing in free agency or anything like that maybe they try to find a young player who's kind of on the rise a little bit or somebody they can at least uh make a little bit of a bet on but otherwise, I wouldn't expect them to be a major landing spot for any of the top guys that are out there. But the next team we have to look at, I think this might be the most fascinating out of all of them. Because if anybody has to get it right, it's the Dallas Mavericks. They're in a position where they're probably keeping Luka Doncic uh, long term. He's going to sign that extension. 
But the clock is going to be ticking, and the pressure is certainly on. They obviously have some turnover in the front office, just hired on Jason Kidd as their new head coach. And now they've got to make, not they don't just have to land somebody in free agency. They have to land the right fit in order to push them to the next level. Yeah, thirty-four point three million is my projected cap space for them. Uh, for anybody wondering, yes, that does mean renouncing Tim Hardaway Jr., but that doesn't mean they can't still use a chunk of that gone. cap space to bring him back. Uh, you can even do something, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more with the Miami Heat, where what you could do is you could uh, bring Hardaway back on a smaller deal, knowing it's only a one-year deal, and then the next year you really take care of him because you'll still have his bird rights, and then you take care of him when you're kind of out of cap space uh, there. So yeah. I think this is going to be um, for the Mavericks. This is you're getting down to it too. Not only with the timing on we got to keep Luca happy and we got to do the right moves, but you're also getting down to it with Luca along the lines of you're going to have him on the books at a very large number here pretty soon. Potentially, you also have Chris Stapps Porzingis on the books at a pretty large number, and that starts to eat into your cap space potential really, really big. So it's either this summer or next summer, about it for the Mavs to uh, to to make those big moves, and I think it might be this summer. And again, not a great free agent class, so it's probably going to come uh, via trade. Uh, but we know Mark Cuban will sign off. He's going to be aggressive. Their new general manager, Nico Harrison, comes in with kind of the idea of this guy's a great connector, great relationship with a lot of different players. So hopefully they're banking on him to bring somebody in. But yeah, Dallas is going to be definitely a fun team to watch. And this is part of the reason why we have Kristaps Porzingis on the video that we published the other day uh, as one of the players that is most likely to get traded this offseason because yeah. we know the Mavs are going to look to do something big. They're going to try to make a splash. Uh, let's, yeah, let's and if to... you move him with very little coming yeah. back, that just increases your your spending power you know, moving forward. So, you know, that could could be the direction there. Yeah, go go ahead. Go, go to the next one because the next uh, four are all within the same range-ish. Right. Yeah, the next four right there. So let, let's talk about Jurassic Park. The Toronto Raptors are in a situation where they could have a decent amount of spending power. Now, Kyle Lowry is still out there. He'll be a, be a free agent. But $23.1 million in cap space for the Raptors. Definitely kind of a transition year. Obviously, they've got that title under their belt. They're very happy with that. But the Raptors' future is very much in flux right now. It's going to be interesting, interesting to see what they do with this money here, how they handle the Kyle Lowry situation. Can they negotiate a sign-and-trade? Do they bring him back on a one-year deal? I don't know. This Raptors team has a lot of different things they can do with the money, but not quite as much spending power as some of the big guys out there like the Knicks or the Spurs. Yeah, and, and what changed some of that that number was moving up in the draft. Yeah. They they were they were pre-lottery slotted at seventh. They moved up to fourth. Now that's not a bad thing. No, they can't complain really too much player. About that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, yeah, it's um, and they're a team that, did, again, not a lot of guys under contract there. Um, you know, if, if they're going to go this route, it's it's pretty much Fred Van Vliet, uh, uh, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam and Malachi Flynn. Now, that's their guaranteed money moving into next year. Now, they could keep guys like Chris Boucher, Aaron Baines, uh, a handful of other non-guaranteed players. They could resign Kyle Lowry. They wanted to go that route, but yeah, Raptors are are in a you know kind of, kind of fun spot. I think they're one of the teams. I think we're all looking at could they trade out of four and say you know I don't really want to build around a kid. You know where we've kind of you know like our core here. They're not they're not uh they're not old by any means, but they're not super young to go you know with the kids. So let's you know see what we can do here. But we know Masai Ujiri as long as he's running things, which. Right now he doesn't have a contract <laughs> yet, so <laughs> so we'll see. You know, we're, yeah, we're all assuming he's going to be back there, but you know, let, let's see. But yeah, it's uh, you know, that one is interesting. If he is back there, which we expect he will be, um, we know he's not going to be afraid to make a big move if he thinks it's the right move for his team because he's done it time and time again, um, maybe in previous years. So yeah, I think the Raptors are interesting. Uh, another team, this one. Uh, now we're getting kind of into a swing team here, uh, the Memphis Grizzlies. So. They'll, they'll either be over the cap if they retain Justice Winslow um, and bring him back uh, on a team option. They'll stay over the cap, and then they'll have access to the non-taxpayer mid-level exception and the biannual exception. Or they could decline that option, renounce Winslow, and go with $22.8 million in cap space. Here's why I think that's the direction to go. Yeah. This team only has two open roster spots. Um, they have their roster stocked full of good young players, a lot of them on good contracts. 
Jaron Jackson Jr., this is the last year for him on the rookie scale. Mm -hmm. So he's going to get expensive next year. By all all accounts, they're going to do what they can to retain him. And then John Morant's only a year behind. That's just how quick it moves in the NBA. We're already there for John Morant. That you know, we're, we're gonna, or he's only two years behind, I right. guess. But 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 we're almost there with, with him. Uh, again, this is his new deal. So um, so that's where we're going to be at. They're going to have those two guys, you know, probably you know, one north of $20 million um, on the book. So it's kind of getting to the point of use it or lose it time here for the Grizzlies. It's either going to be this year or next year. And I think this year, $22.8 million with only, um, you know, just a couple roster spots to fill, they could be in a position to overpay one of these kind of mid-tier free agent guys just to make sure you get them. For example, let's say they really wanted DeMar DeRozan. That was my They could give him thinking. $20 million. Yeah, you could give him $20 million for one year, and it's certainly not going to hurt you. you know, now, that's probably roughly what he could get other places. So maybe you say, you know, all right, we'll give you $20 million for this year, and then we'll give you, uh, you know, twenty, you know, $2 million next year, but we're only going to guarantee, you know, uh, well, what? But we'll guarantee – you know, 15 million of it or something like that to just create a little bit of our own flexibility uh, going forward. So that's why I think they'll move off Winslow and then add to it. I don't think Winslow has been very good for them. So that makes it a little easier to move on from him. Yeah. I mean, look, Winslow is not without value, right? I mean, he's an interesting piece when he's healthy, but that's obviously rarely been the case that, that he's been healthy. So if you're looking at the situation from the Grizzlies perspective, you can either have what is it, $12, $13 million total in spending power if you're using your mid-level and biannual mm -hmm. exceptions, or you can have $22 million to go spend, but you lose Justice Win Winslow. I agree with you, Keith. I would rather have the $22 million to go spend, and then you can go make a bit more, a, a medium-sized splash, I guess. I should say the top three yep. agents probably aren't, you know, uh, hoping to wind up with the Memphis Grizzlies, but there's some guys out there that would be happy to go and uh, and take that kind of a payday. So if, that's the, if I'm the Grizzlies, that's the route I'm going for sure. Yeah, absolutely. The other swing team, Miami Heat. I uh, project them at twenty point five million. Now, Miami's a very weird spot with them. They can they can even bump that number up if if they do a couple things. So let, let's talk about their yeah. options. One option would be to stay over the cap, pick up the team options for Goran Dragic, Andre Iguodala, and essentially run it back with the group you had last year. Hope for better health and all those things that you know their team what. Uh, 12 of hoping for better health mm -hmm. next year yeah. and all those things, um, you know, of, of the, the around the league. But that becomes, is that the direction you want to go? Or do you say, all right, you know what, we're going to go under the cap, which would also include renouncing Victor Oladipo. But with Goran Dragic, this is where I mentioned with Hardaway, um, you could do, okay, what we'll do is we'll bring you back with the cap space we have left. Uh, we'll bring you back on the room exception, whatever it is, and then we'll take care of the year after, uh, those kind of things. They have that ability. They can also carve out a little bit more space if what they do with Duncan Robinson and or Kendrick Nunn, I, I would assume it's only going to be one of the two. Yeah. But if they get to like Duncan Robinson and say, all right, we've come to an agreement and we're, we're signing you for $15 million a year or whatever it is, what they have the ability to do there is they could um, – rescind his qualifying offer make him an unrestricted free agent which frees up almost three million more or so in cap space okay. um because then what that does is you've already got him locked up so it doesn't matter that you don't have his restricted rights because you've already agreed to a new deal it's just a way to massage things you can't do that to you agree to a new deal because otherwise now you're opening up to you can go anywhere and right. you have no recourse but but that's something they could do they could do that with none as well so they could grow this to as much as 26 million or so in cap space so what what that does is that gives them all sorts of optionality uh there for the heat this summer again i think it's a little more of similar -ish to the grizzlies where uh, rather than definitely Dragic and Iguodala back. I think I'd rather have 20 plus million and see what I could do. And then, um, you know, still maybe conserving some flexibility into the future years and those kind of things. It would also make trades. We know they're always star hunting for free agents or not free agents, but stars through trade. Um, so that's another one where they could become a team where it's like, yeah, we're going to free up all this flexibility and then we're going to make a trade. They could be a Kyle Lowry destination if you had 20 plus million to work with and those kind of things. So that's, that's the direction why I think the Miami Heat will go. Yeah. We've been hearing Kyle Lowry connected with them for a while. Wouldn't surprise me if something happened there. Uh, between the two, I think Duncan Robinson is probably the guy that they decide to hang on to, but he's also a guy who could sure. get some pretty big offers out there. If another team wants to try to make the Miami Heat blanket with a restricted free agent offer, 
It's possible. You never know. That, yeah, that, could, that could be the Knicks, right? That could be the Spurs. Uh, teams that could use a little bit more shooting, you know, that could kind of afford to, you know, overpay. I, I think Robinson's ceiling on a their uh, floor on a deal, rather, is Joe Harris. Yeah. Um, I think he's probably going to get paid, you know, roughly what Harris got paid, if not a little bit more. Uh, he's a, he's not super young for a guy who hasn't been in the league very long because it took him a while to get there. But he's also somebody I think his game should age quite well for what he is. He's kind of, in a way, he's kind of like the new Kyle Korver, yeah, right, where is. you can you know, build a lot of things around him to make it work. One last team, yep. uh, Charlotte Hornets, $20.4 million. Now, normally, I think we might look at this and say, oh, that's cute, but they're not going to do anything. But last year, they landed Gordon Hayward yep. and out of nowhere, right, parachuted in at the last minute and said, hey, you want to come here for a whole bunch of money? And again, another team, last chance kind of at spending power because you've they've got some guys to re-sign coming up in the future as well, and that's going to turn into Devontae Graham needs a new contract this offseason, so he's somebody that they're going to have to figure things out with. So I think what you're going to see with Charlotte do is uh, come to an agreement with Graham, take a similar approach like, like the Duncan Robinson, Kendrick Nunn, that I mentioned of drop them out, uh, rescind the qualifying offer that'll freeze up three more million in cap space, and then they're going to go chase them. Probably a big would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, and 23 million, or even if it's only 20 million, but 23 million on the high side, that can get you a pretty good big, uh, in, in free agency, you know, um, yeah, and probably still have plenty of uh, spending power left over, and not as many Ross or rotation spots to fill in Charlotte, as you may think, for a team that didn't make the playoffs. And there again, one of those teams I think that's looking, if we had a little bit of talent, we have a little bit better health, we're in the playoffs next year because they, right, they, they were there all season long until we had about two weeks left, and then they slid out. So, yeah, I th think the Hornets are going to be a, a team to watch this summer just because uh, they're, they're interesting, and we all know Michael Jordan is not a uh, super patient. He wants to win. He's going to want to get good players in there sooner rather than later. And one guy that they had interest in last off season, and there's been rumored interest since then is Montrez Harold, who is probably going to opt out of his deal with the Lakers and could wind up being out there on the market. Maybe that's somebody they can target. This could be a landing spot for a number of different bigs, because that does appear to be a mm -hmm. need of theirs, particularly when you've got a guy like LaMelo Ball who can go out there and feed the basketball to some of these these centers. As long as you get somebody yep. who can rim run a little bit, that guy could be a very, very impactful piece for them. So definitely a Let me tell to you watch the there. Perfect fit for them. Uh -huh. Daniel Tice. Perfect fit to, to be their big man. Can shoot, can pretty good in yes. the pick and roll game. Pretty already knows how to work with Hayward. Uh, is also, I believe, he played with Rozier in his first year in Boston. So yeah, Daniel Tice. I, I think they should not that they should give all twenty million, but that's a guy you could give, you know, seven million to, right. and then still have a ton. And if you did seven million on him, and then like ten million on uh, Montrezl Harrell or something like that, you're pretty well set at that position. I don't know if they'll go two bigs because they do like PJ Washington at the five. They like to play Miles Bridges up at the four. But yeah, I, th I think, you know, one of those two guys, if I had to guess on anything, I think one of those two guys could really land there in Charlotte because I think both of them make a lot of sense for the Hornets. But, but we'll see. But that's it, eight teams that I project to have cap space. Everybody else I project to be over the cap. A uh, handful of teams over the tax as well. Uh, we'll probably get into that as we go along here and uh, continue chugging towards the offseason there. But those eight teams look like they're going to have the most spending power this summer. Yep, yep. So it's going to be interesting. Obviously, there's, gonna, there's not a ton of free agents to spend on. But like we said to start, there's a lot of different ways that you can use cap room besides just signing free agents. So going to be a really, really interesting NBA summer, a lot of trades going down. Should be a lot of fun. Keith, great breakdown, man. And I hope we were able to uh, shed some light on what kind of spending power is out there. Yeah, absolutely. I think think uh, you know that hopefully gets people a little bit more excited for the off season. Uh, you know, as we get we we get down to it, we're only a month out from it really being full on off season time. Can't wait. All right, guys, make sure you do subscribe right here to the NBA Front Office YouTube channel. And don't forget to like this video. Until next time, stay safe and see you.